Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm pretty excited about this video because today I'm gonna to show you how to use your Mac inside your MetaQuest. Now, I'm not just talking about hooking it up to the computer and transferring files and doing side quests and stuff like that. I'm talking about using your Mac desktop in a virtual environment. So if you just have your laptop and you want a bigger screen, you can go into this virtual environment, make the screen as big as you want, but you can also set up multiple displays and a pass-through for your keyboard so you could see your real keyboard in your virtual environment and actually use this as a productive space. So let's jump right into this. I'm gonna show you the software to install on your Mac, the software to install inside the headset, and then give you a little tour. So let's get into this. All right, so here we are on the Mac desktop. Now the first thing we're gonna do is open up your browser of choice, and then we're gonna to go to immerse.com. Now once you're on this site, we're gonna download the file, and the easiest way to do that is just scroll down a little bit and just click on the one for whatever operating system you're using. In this case, we're using Mac OS, so we'll just select that one. And this works just fine on M1 Macs. That's what I'm using it on here, a M1 MacBook Pro. So now that we have that, we're going to just uh, click on the DMG to open it up and drag that into our applications folder. Now, once that's in the applications folder, we can go ahead and close this and then launch your application however you like. I like to just hit command space and we're gonna do immersed and run that. Now, because we haven't run this before, it doesn't know the source that it came from because we didn't get it from the store. So we just gotta tell it that we're allowing it to open and then we'll have to go through a bunch of permissions here. So let's just go through all these and we're gonna click on the lock here. Just gonna use my fingerprint, but you can put in your password. And we're gonna click immersed, hit okay to get to the next one. And then we're gonna hit the check mark on the screen recording. Now you may have some additional per permissions. I've actually installed this on my computer before, uh, so it may not have hit all the ones, but if you see any additional ones, just go through and add those as well. So now we are all ready. We have this installed on Mac OS. So now we're gonna go over to the Quest headset and get it installed on there as well. All right, so here we are in our Quest home. Now we are just gonna to go to the store and we're gonna do a search for Immersed. And then we're just gonna select this and install it. So this is free as well. And this should just take a few minutes to install. And once it's all done, uh, we'll come back and continue on. Okay, Immersed is installed on our headset. So we're just gonna go ahead and launch it. Now, since you're on the same network as your computer is, hopefully you are, if not, you need to be. Uh, when this launches on the computer, it's gonna detect that there's a version of Immersed that's just been activated. And it's gonna ask you if that username from your Quest he headset is the one that you wanna use. So we'll see that in just a second here. So as you can see on the screen now, it's asking me if that's my username, I'm gonna hit yes. It's gonna automatically fill in the username and the pairing code. All right, for some reason that didn't fill in, so we're just gonna manually fill this in so we can Type in the username and then the pairing code is in the right upper right hand corner. So we're gonna type that in. And you can see on the computer, everything is ready and we are connected in the headset. All right, so here we are on our Mac desktop and this is the most simple form that you can use this app. There is the uh, screen in front of us. This is just mirroring our laptop screen and you can do it a flat screen, you can do it curved, you can increase the curve on that, you can change the size of the window. If it's too small for you, you can unpin it in the corner and then just grab one of these corners and make it as big or as little as you want. Now that's cool and all, and you can come in here, you can uh, use your computer, you, know, you can use the trackpad and navigate around your computer and the keyboard, but it's really hard to see that uh, trackpad and keyboard when you're in VR, because you look down where your keyboard is in real life, you can't see it, so you try to peek around the corner and you can see my 
my hands just popped up so you can navigate in here with your hands instead of the controllers but when i look down i can't see the placement of my hands on my keyboard in real life and that is where the first just amazing feature this is <laughs> this is so cool um, where you can go and set up a pass through for your keyboard so we're going to turn that on and then uh, let me get out of the menu here then we can just take this and maneuver it down now it's a little hard to position and maneuver but if we want to just put that around our laptop we can see the keyboard and the trackpad so now if we take our hands in real life we can see the placement we can find our trackpad and use the computer much much easier in this virtual environment now we can kind of rotate this to get it out of the way like i said i haven't exactly figured out the rotation of this so it's a it's a little bit tricky but you get the idea so now we have a pass-through window to our laptop that we can go and uh you know see where we're placing our hands so that's really cool so now we can use our laptop screen in a bigger screen and that alone is is uh, pretty incredible if you ask me but the next cool thing is that we can actually add additional monitors now i'm just using a mac laptop i don't have any additional screens hooked up to it but i can do a virtual screen so i can click this to add another one and then we can come and uh, unpin this and just kind of snap it right alongside the other one. So now we have two screens. If we go down and let me readjust this a little bit, if we go down and use our trackpad. You can see our mouse cursor move seamlessly between the two. We can drag windows over there. I mean, at this point, it's basically a, or, or it is a secondary screen. So say we want another one, we can come in here and we can add another screen. And then, uh, you know, we can unpin it again and move it into position, position on the other side. And now we have three screens that we can move between and move all our windows and use our computer just like we normally would. Now, if you see every once in a while, this uh, window down at the bottom moves and that's because I forgot to pin it. So once you get it into position, if you come up here and hit the little pin, now it's pinned. And now if uh, I move the, the cursor and stuff, it won't move around. So that'll stay in place. Uh, if you have something in your room, that you need to see, like there's something on your wall up above you up there, or you know, a clock over on this side, you can add pass-through windows, which is another amazing feature of this. So you can add additional pass-through windows. If we click here, you can do a full pass-through. So if you do that, it shows you your room. Uh, I can just kind of show you this. It shows my office. I have a lot of light in here, so it's it's super bright. Or you can turn that off and just set up portals if there's a specific thing in the room that you want to see. And you have up to five portals you can do. And we will do just do one as an example. So say I need to see something on my monitor over there. I can set up this portal to display my monitor. We can change the size of it. And then uh, we can change the auto color settings that make it a little easier to see. We can adjust the brightness and all that stuff. We can turn on ed edge rendering to highlight the edges, which uh, there's some instances where you would want to use that. For me, I can't really think of one <laughs> off the top of my head. But as you can see, you can set up these portals into the real world from the virtual environment. And uh, it just makes it super easy because it kind of blends the real world with your virtual world and makes this much more functional. So let's just go ahead and close those. And again, those windows you can uh, toggle on and off as well. Now, the last thing that I want to show you, and there are a lot of other features in here, but the last one that I'm going to show you today is the virtual camera. So if we go and turn on, you know what? Before I do this, there's one permission that I forgot, and we can do that from inside here. I forgot to allow the screen recording, but it looks like it got it anyway. So 
we're good there. Okay, so now if we go in and go to the webcam, toggle the immersed virtual webcam. Uh, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but we have to allow audio recording. And then we also uh, allow access to the photos and media so we can save some, our videos. So now I'm gonna go and select that again, toggle that on. So now we have this little virtual camera. So if we do something on our computer and it looks like I lost my keyboard, so let me turn that back on. Okay. So now if we do something like load up OBS, you can see that this is me in the virtual environment. So I put my controllers down, so I have my hands, so I can use my hands, I can point, I can wiggle my fingers, and you can make this bigger. It's a super low resolution image, but as you can see, it shows up as a camera device, so you should be able to select this in Teams or Skype or uh, you know whatever video conference you use. Obviously, you can use it in OBS, because that's what I'm doing right here. And you can see the hand tracking and the finger tracking are working fine. I'm gonna pick up the controller, because you can use this environment with just the hand tracking, but honestly, it's a lot easier to use the controller. And I can grab this camera, and I can move it wherever I want. I can move it up, down, closer in, further out, and this just uses your, uh, I almost said Oculus, but your meta, meta avatar. So uh, that is another really, really cool feature that allows you to blend the virtual environment and the quote unquote real world, uh, and just allow you to use your avatar in a real chat. So you can be in an actual chat with other real people and have your avatar in there. It's actually very, very cool. This application is, is free and uh, it works super well. I'm just working over off of Wi-Fi 6 and it's completely smooth. There's just so much utility to this app from using your computer with multiple screens that you don't actually have, making your screens bigger. You know, if you like curved displays, but you only have the flat screen, you can even do that. You can use the virtual camera. And there are a ton of other features that I did not touch on that are all in these menus here. If anybody is interested in that, let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to do a video on those items, but uh, just didn't include it in this one because I just wanted to give you an intro to Immersed using it with the Quest on your Mac. So there you go, that is Immersed in a nutshell. It's all free and works great, even over Wi-Fi, which is what I've been using in this video. Now you may be wondering why you would wanna do this. One use case I can really see is if your only computer is your Mac laptop, your Apple laptop, and you are in a very limited space, maybe a small apartment or a small office or something like that, and you don't have room for multiple displays, you can put on your Quest headset, connect up to the computer, and set up those multiple displays and just have an array of different screens that you can utilize just as if they were physical screens. And then you can set up those path pass-throughs for different things around your room or your office. Maybe there's a wall clock you wanna look at, you can set up a pass-through. Uh, there's just a bunch of utility to this application and a bunch of use cases, but that is probably the most prevalent that I can think of. If you're using this or you can think of some other use cases, let me know down in the comment section below. If you want me to go deeper into any of this stuff, let me know that as well. If you like this kind of video, uh, please hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.